You ever imagine a country with thousands of islands, endless coastline, and very expensive water to defend, suddenly launching frigates that look like they swallowed tech from superpowers, but cost way less than what you'd expect? Welcome to the Philippines in 2025. While many navies are buying old junk or tweaking decades-old ships, Manila just got its hands on the Miguel Malvar-class guided missile frigate, a vessel that might not break the bank but sure pushes others to sweat. Today we're going to tear apart what this ship really brings to the table, its strength, its weak spots, and whether it's enough to shift power in the South China Sea. Because having a fancy radar is one thing, being able to use it when it matters is another. The Philippines has a geography problem. Thousands of islands, contested waters, hello, South China Sea, and neighbors with bigger navies, bigger ships, bigger missiles. For decades, its fleet has lagged. Older ships, limited air defense, limited missile reach, radar coverage spotty. Meanwhile, potential adversaries, or even just opportunists, have been beefing up. Coast Guard patrols, fast attack craft, missiles stationed on reefs, drones buzzing around. If your frigate can't see far enough, can't shoot fast enough, or can't survive hits, it's just a very expensive target. So the core problem, the Philippines needed something that gives them credible surface, air, anti-submarine presence, something that doesn't just look good in parades, while keeping cost, maintenance, and supply chain headaches somewhat manageable, and that's a tall order. Here's where the Miguel Malvar class steps into the spotlight. Forget the old second-hand gunboats the Philippines used to parade around, this frigate is in a different league. With a displacement of about 3,200 tons and 118 meters in length, it's no oversized battleship, but it's big enough to carry serious firepower while staying nimble for patrols across the islands. Add in 20 days of endurance and a 4,500 nautical mile range, and suddenly the Philippine Navy can stay on station instead of constantly rushing back to port. Now, the fun part, weapons. The Malvar isn't just waving a flag, it's packing a 16-cell VLS with VL Mika missiles, giving it a real air defense shield for the first time in the fleet's history. For surface fights, it fields eight Sea Star anti-ship missiles, the kind of hardware that can crack open bigger opponents. Submarines lurking nearby? The ship carries Blue Shark torpedoes fired from triple launchers. And when things get up close and dirty, there's an Odo Malara 76mm gun up front backed by the Aselson goked in his Sea Whiz to shred missiles and drones before they hit. But weapons are useless without eyes. And here the Malvar brings the EL-M2258 Alpha AESA radar, a serious step up that tracks multiple threats fast. Supporting it are navigation radars, fire control systems, electro-optical sites, and sonar, turning this ship into a ship that can actually fight in air, surface, and subsurface domains. For a Navy that spent decades underarmed, this isn't just an upgrade, it's a transformation. But, and you knew there'd be a but, Miguel Malvar isn't perfect, no ship is. The weaknesses matter, especially when facing smarter adversaries. Propulsion survivability trade-offs, CODAD, diesel only. That's fine for cost, range, fuel efficiency, but less punch for high speed, sprinting, or escape. No gas turbines, no hybrid propulsion for high burst speed, that limits chase and reaction in certain scenarios. Air defense envelope. The VL Mika is a solid missile, but with 16 VLS cells, you're still constrained if saturation attacks happen, multiple missiles, drones at once. There might be a gap versus very large aerial threats or needs for layered air defense envelope, long range, medium range, around the ship or fleet. Anti-submarine warfare. Hall-mounted sonar is good, but no mention of towed array sonar or robust ASW helicopter or UAV complement with dipping sonar or sonar buoys. Submarines are sneaky. Detection is half battle. Logistics, maintenance, training. You can buy high tech, but you need crews trained, spare parts procured, maintenance dockyards capable, often the undoing of ambitious programs. If the Philippines doesn't keep funding consistent, these ships could degrade fast. 
regional threats and political constraints. Operating in contested waters, with bigger countries nearby overlapping claims, means risk of confrontation. Also, diplomacy, rules of engagement, and proving you will use the ship are as important as owning it. Here's where it gets spicy. The Miguel Malvar isn't just a naval asset, it's a statement to China, to Asian neighbors, to the US, to everyone. The Philippines is serious about defending its maritime claims. It's saying, we're not helpless. It also shifts the balance a bit. Combine these ships with better radar, better missile reach, you increase the cost for anyone trying to intrude. They raise deterrence. They complicate calculations of adversaries. On the flip side, this could push an arms race. Bigger ships, more missiles, more naval drone development. Also, reliance on foreign suppliers, South Korea, European missile manufacturers, etc., means geopolitical strings, dependencies. And let's not forget, these frigates will be political symbols at home. If they perform well, patrols, crisis response, sovereignty enforcement, they bolster government legitimacy. If they fail, mechanical breakdowns, inability to sustain operations, they become easy targets for criticism. So, what's the verdict? The Miguel Malvar class frigates are not super destroyers. They're not going to take on a carrier group alone, but they are exactly what the Philippines needed. Modern, credible, multi-role warships that finally give real capacity for air defense, surface warfare, and undersea threats. Questions for you. Do these frigates actually shift a naval power balance in Southeast Asia? Could they force China or anyone to rethink aggressive moves in the South China Sea? And do you think the Philippines can sustain operating this much complexity without breaking the budget? If you like this breakdown, smash that like button like you're firing VL Micahs at invaders. Subscribe for more Military Tech Exposed and stay sharp because in naval power, as in war, it's not about who has the biggest gun, it's about who sees, decides, and strikes first. Until next time, this is Military Forces Unleashed, signing off.